In this video, I'm going to do another example of solving a system of equations using Gauss-Jordan elimination, uh, or in other words, uh, taking an augmented matrix and turning it into reduced Rochelon forms by putting zeros in those triangular spots as previously indicated. In this one, I'm going to do it faster uh, and explain less just to show you how you could do it a little bit quicker. Uh, and then I want to teach you how to do it with your calculator, because ultimately that's what I'm going to be expecting you to learn is how to use your calculator to solve systems, um, which is just a, a nice thing to know. Basically, it's it's a it's a huge, tremendous shortcut um, so that I don't have to do this by hand because we can program calculators to do these, these procedures. Uh, but I wanted you to see how the procedures work um, so that it just doesn't seem like magic. Um, but anyways, first step is to turn the first, the second row and third row's first columns into zeros. Uh, so I'm going to take the second row, subtract it from the first row, keep the first row the same. I'm not going to label my work as, as well, but basically first row minus second row, negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, 3 minus negative 2 is 3 plus 2 is 5, and 4 minus 10 is negative 6. And then I want to take 3 times the first row and subtract the second row or the third row, or in the same way, take this times minus 1 and this times 3 and add them together. Uh, but you can add or subtract them if you prefer. But that would be negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Um, 3 minus 1, because I'm, I'm going to take the first row times negative 3 and add. So that would be 3 minus 1 is 2. Um, negative 9 plus 5 is negative 4. And negative 12 plus 14 is 2. Also, another trick that I could do is I could notice notice that the third row is divisible by 2. Uh, another thing I'm allowed to do in the row operations, which I did not use in the previous video, is I'm allowed to um, interchange the rows. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to interchange row 2 and row 3, and I'm going to divide row 3 by 2. So I'm going to keep the first one the same, 0, 1, negative 2, 1, and I'm going to swap the third row down to the bottom. And the reason I'm doing this is just to uh, avoid the fractions. And remember that the goal was to get 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And notice that since this equation has 3, 5, and 6, if I were to turn this into a 1, I would need to divide through by negative 3, which is a little bit ugly. I mean, technically, I could add the equations together to do that as well. But this is kind of the easiest way, in my opinion, to uh, get a 1 into that slot. But this is that's an optional step. Uh, I just think it will make it easier. Now my goal is to get a zero down here, so I want to take three times row two and add it to row three. So that's what I'm going to do next, and I'm going to keep the first two rows the same because those are progressing the way that I want them to. And then three times one is three plus negative 3 is 0, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, plus 5 is negative 1, and 3 times 1 is 3, plus negative 6 is negative 3. And then I could multiply the row 3 by positive 1 as well to get that into a 1, and there we go. Now I have it in row echelon form. I have triangular form, upper triangular form with zeros in those spots. And so technically this, this is pretty much solved already, but if I go ahead and reduce the row echelon form, aka get zero in these three spaces here, I will have finished solving it perfectly. So let's go ahead and do that as well. So next I want to take two times row three and add it to row two. Again, now that row three is solved, I'm done messing with that, and I know that z is equal to three. But if I multiply it by row two, uh, if I multiply by two and add it to row two, those two will stay the same because each was zero before. And then I will get one times two is two plus negative two is zero. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. And that should give me the solution for y. And I'll go ahead and get uh, 0 in this location as well by multiplying by negative 3 to row 3 and adding. So again, those two will stay the same. And I'll get negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Plus 4 is negative 5. And then the final 0 to get is right here which is I can do just by simply adding row two to row one. And if I do that, I'm gonna get, again, I'm gonna leave these two rows the same because those have been solved already. 
And now I would get 0 plus 1 is 0, 1 plus negative 1 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, and 7 plus negative 5 is 2. And assuming I did not mess anything up in there, I would have my system now solved in reduced rational form, which would give me the answers x, comma, y, comma, z. Hence the answer to my system. And now to check myself, because I did that all pretty quickly, just as a personal challenge, um, was to, did, did this actually work? Um, so if I did it the old fashioned way, I could plug it back in. This would give me two minus seven plus nine. That's indeed four. I could plug it in here, two plus 14, 16, 16 minus six, 10, yes. And then six minus seven, negative one, plus 15, 14, yes. So it indeed worked. I demonstrated the process of solving the system via matrix form. And now all that's left to do is solving it in our calculator because your calculator can do all the same procedures I just did strategically in the same way. And it actually doesn't really matter what numbers you start with in your matrix. It can apply the strategy and use those row operations to reduce it into a form where basically the calculator will find the answer. And instead of doing algebra, it's doing matrix math. Um, as a way of, of doing this. And so in the next video, we will do a few examples of solving these systems, and I'll teach you how you can do it in your graphing calculator.